Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, AvriLR32 here, and welcome back to another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! In-Depth. You liked the last one so much that you came back for another one, didn't you? Well, go ahead and sit back, relax, but first, smash the ever-living boo-boo stain like you did on the last Yu-Gi-Oh! In-Depth. On, like, on that like, subscribe, and notification bell if my ass could talk today. As we climb even higher, the 1100 ladder, we're so close to 1200 subscribers, I can taste it like it's a bowl of ice cream, ladies and gentlemen, or a rice bowl, since samurais eat rice bowls. I'm going to shut up now, uh, <laughs> and I'm going to talk to you today about Yu-Gi-Oh! In-Depth, Super Heavy Samurai Choke Points, Combos, some combos. There's already so many fucking combo videos on YouTube. I don't know if I'm going to go so much into that. We'll kind of see where this gravy train takes us as we talk about all this, but just like in the last Yu-Gi-Oh! In-Depth, I want to talk about the Super Heavy Samurai deck as a whole, Choke Points, where you should use your hand traps, all the things that we discussed in the Yu-Gi-Oh! In-Depth video with Purely. Specifically, I want to talk about the deck as a whole, consistency, things like that. I want to add on from what I did with the previous Yu-Gi-Oh! In-Depth. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. So the biggest thing that you want to know about Super Heavy Samurai going into this new format, also before we get a ban list, because that'll obviously shake things up when we get that, probably around some point in June, um, this is a 40 card monster deck. Now, fun fact, a little bit of a backstory on this. We've actually seen 40 card monster mash decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! before, specifically the Gallus the Star Beast FTK slash OTK back in around, I want to say 2010 to 2011-ish, where it was a 40 card deck full of monsters. You played three copies of GeneX Ally Birdman, because back then it was at three, and then three copies of Gallus the Star Beast. This is actually the, basically the main reason why uh, Ally Birdman went to one was because of this deck. And you would play cards like Kokomiru Doom, which would negate the effects of i believe dark monsters let me see if i can pull it up here without ending my recording um let me see here koki miru doom yes so uh it would uh negate the effects of light and dark monsters that activate during the main phase so you'd have that on the field you would have gallus um, and then you could recycle your Gallus and your GNX Ally Birdman without losing any sort of advantage. And then you would be guaranteed to do burn damage every time with Gallus of Starbeast because you're playing a 40 card deck of monsters that were basically just all extenders that could go into synchro plays if the Gallus of Starbeast play didn't work out or if you didn't open with it. Something else that you should know about Super Heavy Samurai, this build in particular, I pulled from a regional, just like with the Purely build. The build is kind of irrelevant because you may watch this video when it's a month old and then people will be like, well, the build sucks. Don't worry about the build. It's the concept of the deck and what it is that it's capable of that you should be more concerned with. The build is kind of just whatever. It's just more of a basis point for discussing the deck. But something that you should also know about the deck is that it can play a ass ton of hand traps. When I say ass ton, I mean ass ton. Uh, for context, when Sprite was trying to beat Tier 0 Tier Element uh, just last format, they were playing anywhere on average from 12 to 15 hand traps in their main deck just to beat Tier Element. They were playing a Buy Steel Package, Ash, uh, Ogres, Moonlit Chills, Veilers, Imperms, you name it. This particular build is playing, let's see here, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 hand traps, and that's not including hand traps that they can side in side deck into, like the Psy Frame Gear Epsilon, as well as the Buy Steel package. We're not going to count this as hand traps in the deck because obviously they're side decks. You could what most likely would happen is that you take out uh hand traps for certain other hand traps. Did I count that right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Okay, yeah, I thought I didn't count Moonlit Chill. This deck, I would say the average number of super heavy samurai. Uh, decks that are playing hand traps. I would say the average number of hand traps that the decks all together play is anywhere from 12 to 15. I did see one build the other day that was playing 19 hand traps in the main deck. And this is just because of the fact that really all you need to get your engine going is Wakushi. Wakushi and uh, Monk Big Benkai make this deck go around the world in 80 days, ladies and gentlemen. And also, whenever you look at the main deck, you're really only playing, what, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 monsters. Uh, 
are super heavy samurais and it's literally just the ones that are actually good so let's go over wakushi and big benkai because these are the two new cards that a cyberstorm access that actually make the deck good because without these cards the deck is just kind of booty booty butt cheeks um so wakushi is a pendulum monster just like big benkai its pendulum effect is that if you have no spell or traps in your grave which you won't because spoiler alert you're playing 40 monsters you can place one super heavy samurai pendulum monster from your deck except wakushi in your other pendulum zone and special summon this card you can only use this effect once per turn it's monster effect is that if you have no spell or traps in your grave you can ditch a monster to special summon a super heavy samurai monster from your hand or deck in defense mode also you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of this turn except super heavy samurai monsters if this card is used as a synchro material and added to your extra deck face up you can place this card in your pendulum zone you can only use each effect once per turn so the monster effect to lock you into super heavy samurais does not come up very often i would say unless the super heavy samurai player is like in a pinch but yet even then they can only special summon the super heavy samurai monsters in their deck and they can only go for the synchro if they're playing any of the super heavy samurai synchros as well as their link primarily the way that the super heavy samurai player is going to use wakushi is for its pendulum effect and preferably with no monsters on the field so that if you try to hand trap them then they can gamma the shit out of you uh next up let's talk about being big kai here so if you control a super heavy samurai monster you can add a super heavy samurai soul monster from your deck to your hand you can only use this uh effect once per turn that's the pendulum effect monster effect is that if you have no spell or traps in your grave you can send one super heavy samurai big benkai from your hand or deck to the grave you don't play big benkai so you don't need to worry about that special summon this card from your hand if this card is used as synchro material and added to your extra deck face up you can place this card in your pendulum zone only use each effect once per turn so if you synchro off with this and wakushi and wakushi's a tuner which is busted af then you can bring out a synchro and then you can put both of these into your pendulum scales instead of them just chilling in the extra deck face up we aren't playing big benkai really you primarily use uh big benkai uh, I'm sorry, the Super Heavy Samurai Monk Big Benkai, the monster that you can send is a different Big Benkai, um, but you primarily use it for its pendulum effect to get you to Soul Piercer because it is a Super Heavy Samurai Soul Monster, and if you ever played or knew of um, X Sabers back in the day, like 2011, 2012, how they would just abuse Dark Soul over and over again to get multiple searches, that's basically what Soul Piercer is, so you target a Super Heavy Samurai Monster you control, Equip this monster to your hand or side of the field of that target, and if it attacks a defense from a monster, inflict piercing. You don't give a shit about that. If this card is set from the field of the grave, you can add a super heavy samurai monster from your deck to your hand except itself. That includes if it is in the spell and trap zone, ladies and gentlemen. So if you have it equipped to, like, I don't know, let's say the wagon, and you link off the wagon into the scarecrow, you can then use the soul piercer to search you a monster, and it's not once per turn. You have to keep in mind that these super heavy samurai monsters are from a time long ago in a galaxy far, far away, so a lot of these aren't once per turn, specifically like Soul Piercer and things like that. Now, this particular build is playing both Soul Claw and Stealthy. These are basically just extenders, uh, TLDR. Not a lot of builds play these two cards, but it's something else that the deck does have access to. Um, now, of course, it's also playing Nib because everybody in their mama has to play Nib. But now, what are the choke points in this deck? Well, typically, the way that the Super Heavy Samurai deck wants to start off the ball game is that they want to start off with uh, Wakushi with no monsters. That way, like, if you try to Ghost Ogre them or if you Ash Blossom the Wakushi, then they can use Gamma and then they can pop off from that because then they can Synchro with the Driver into Excel Synchro Stardust, then use the Stardust to get back the Gamma and Excel Synchro doesn't fucking target, which is hilarious. And then they can synchro off into Baron and have a negate before they get to summon number five and can get hit with Nib. Now, from what I've seen with this deck, th I'm going off of this particular build, but this is a 90% uh, consistency rate, ladies and gentlemen. Out of 100 hands, I ended up with 90 that were at the very least playable. Are you going to end up with hands where you open up nothing but hand traps? Yes, that's going to happen. It happens in purely, it can happen in any deck. However, even with opening up five hand traps, I would argue that, that that's not really the worst thing in the world because if you open up multiple different hand traps, you're probably going to be able to lock the opponent out of being able to make any sort of good sized board so that the, that the ball game can, back, can get back to your turn. I can't speak tonight. Can get back to your turn. And then you could pop off with the Wakushi um, or the Soul Gaia booster, things like that. Um, so do keep that in mind. It's not always necessarily a bad thing to open up five hand traps. Does it suck? Would you rather have like a Wakushi? Hell yeah, you would. But it's just something to keep in mind. Of course, the deck's playing Regulus because you can just grab, uh, what is it, a machine? Yeah, you just target a machine monster in your grave, equip it, and now you've got another Omni in the game. This deck is susceptible to Nibiru, depending on how the Super Heavy Samurai player opens and whether or not you trigger their Gamma. 
Um, so do keep that in mind that Nibiru isn't necessarily the worst case to play against this deck. If you're playing a deck that prefers to go second, like rank 8 Axis or some sort of Grimaju, whatever kind of deck, or whatever kind of rogue deck, and you're able to main deck Dark Ruler, Dark Ruler shits on this deck because they can't play back row. This is why they play things like Spell Canceler. And some builds even play Jinzo to out spells and traps. This particular build's playing Epsilon to stop traps. It's the same thing as Gamma, uh, but it just stops traps instead. I would say pretty much all of the Super Heavy Samurai decks play Archfina Centric. Archfina Centric is essentially just an MST, but it's a Pendulum Monster. So it's not a spell. So it can just go to the extra deck, or you can use it as a Pendulum Summon. Uh, its monster effect is that it contributes itself to target a monster on the field and pop it. Basically like a newer version of Exiled Force for you old school GOAT format players. Um, but yeah, that's just something that a lot of builds play. Um, yeah, like everything in the side deck is pretty standard for what you would see in most decks, at least right now at the time of making this video. Now, what are some choke points with this deck? Well, as I mentioned, you want to stop the Wakushi all day, every day, 365 days a year. Um, I have seen Super Heavy Samurai decks where... I feel like that they're just telegraphing that they don't have the Wakushi, where they'll normal summon Soul Piercer and Link off into the Scarecrow, then use the Soul Piercer to go into Wakushi. And that's fine. If you have something like Ash, that's even better because you can deny them the search. Um, but like even if they get to Wakushi and they activate it, try and use its pendulum effect, well, now it's great to ogre the shit out of them because now they've got a monster on board, so now their gammas are just dead. So any copies of that that they have in their hand is just going to be pointless. Um, things like Droll, of course, are great because in this same manner, if they summon Soul Pierce or go into Scarecrow and use the effect of Search and you Droll them, it's basically a turn skip. Um, things like Droll, Gamma, Imperm, Ghost Ogre are fantastic hand traps against this deck. Ash to a lesser degree, depending on how they open. Uh, also, too, if you can deny them any sort of plays, if they have to commit to the Soul Piercer, you know, like let's say that they went second and you're playing purely. Well, if you're like me and you're playing Book of Moon, the moment that they normal summon that Soul Piercer, you Book of Moon the shit out of them because now they've got that foot face down. They can't really use any extenders because in order to even summon out the scales, they can't have any monsters on their side. Yeah, you may have two or more monsters on your side, but they can't special summon the scales because now they have a monster on their board. Hitting their initial normal summon with something like a X Purely Noir, uh, Book of Moon, Compulsory Evacuation Advice to a lesser degree, but you might be playing that if you're playing Labyrinth, like whatever. Hitting that initial normal summon on that Soul Piercer is absolutely disgusting. And really, I feel like that goes for a lot of their main deck monsters. If they have to normal summon something, they're probably in a bind because now, unless they have some sort of extender, whether it's Wakushi or... I mean, they can't even use their equips to the monster because it's face down. So they have to have something else. Like, this is probably why this person was playing uh, Soul Claw and Spy. Because even like with Spy, if you have no spell or traps in your grave, you can special summon this card from your hand. That's another super heavy samurai that they can bring out. But even if they do that, if you have enough gas in the tank, whether on your board or in your hand, to stop them from making any plays, it's not going to matter. Like if they go normal summon Soul Piercer and you book a moon them, okay, now their Soul Piercer's face down. They go special summon Spy. They send off the Spy to make the Scarecrow. Okay, even if they try and use Scarecrow's effect, if you have like a Valor or an Imperm or something, you're going to be fine. Now, you're probably wondering, well, what if I don't open up any hand traps? What if I'm trying to break their board? Well, Nibiru's fantastic if they're not able to set up a negate by summon number five. If they are, then yeah, it sucks, and this is where you can play things like Kaijus. You can play things like Santa Claus, um, playing hand traps yourself, as I mentioned before, Lightning Storms, Dark Rulers, Evenly Match, things like that. Uh, can really help you get the W against this deck. It is an amazing tier one deck. It has a lot of combo lines, but the combo lines are also, I would argue, much easier to take down than something like Purely, because Purely operates a lot like Sky Striker, if you watch the last Yu-Gi-Oh! in depth, where I talked about how not every hand is going to necessarily play out the same. You know, the Purely player may summon out regular Purely, and you Ash them, and then they're just sitting there like, okay, that's great because now I can use another quick play. I can get out Lily. I can get my search. I know that you don't have Ash unless you've got something like Droll to hit me with that. Then, you know, then it's a turn skip. Um, but 
you're you're not always guaranteed that. A lot of builds to play the Spriggan's Merrymaker into the Gigantic Champion Sargass. I wouldn't really say that this is a tech. This is just more something that a lot of the super heavy builds have been picking up on. Uh, essentially, Merrymaker just says that uh, during the opponent's main or battle phase, uh, you can banish it until the end phase, and then if you banish this card with two more materials, you can also send a fusion from your extra deck with the Grave that lists Albaz. That doesn't really matter. You basically just make the Merrymaker to climb up into Gigantic Champion Sargass, which allows you to add the Therion King Regulus to your hand, uh, and it's also 2800 attack so it is a big chunky boy uh and on top of that too if materials are removed from a monster monsters on the field so any monster on either side of the field then you get to target a card on the field and either pop it or return it to the hand uh, obviously that doesn't matter if you have an ex purely noir with five or more materials up but i mean if you've got that you're probably not letting them get to the merry maker and by extension the champion sargass um again what are some things that this deck can lose to like i said hand traps d barrier can hurt them a bit uh in this build's particular case you could call synchro to lock them out of this if they're not able to really get game on the board or break your board with their exceeds they're gonna have a really hard time they'll be forced to go into their link monsters which you know if they're trying to use unicorn and access code to beat you for game that may not necessarily be enough depending on the game state um skill drain is absolutely fantastic as well especially if you go first in game one because skill drain just shits on this deck yeah they'll still get their engrave effects they can still kind of just do regular old beat down Yu-Gi-Oh, drop out regulus maybe get out a couple tuners with their pendulum monsters and just try and make big beat sticks but yet they still have to rely on their monster effects on field to search regulus won't be able to negate uh, they won't be able to be locked into super heavy samurais with the monster effect of wakushi they won't be able to use the effect of the wagon to search they'll still be able to use like the motorbike to search and stuff but for the most part skill drain is a really good out especially if they don't already have like archfina centric or something in their deck in order to take them down um it's it's very odd when looking at this deck when you compare it to one of the other top decks in the room with purely because there's only so much that you can do and it can feel daunting but yet i would argue that this deck also loses to a lot of the similar things that other top decks lose to you know it can't play any spells or traps you never have to worry about back row it the your main thing is using sphere mode on all their monsters lava golems if you prefer that or if you're playing purely using santa claus dropping it out on a negate using kurakara baiting out their negates and then just cleaning up their whole board of negates with a kurakara and just swing you for game i've seen that happen at least like 10 to 15 times to be honest where the opponent will just bait out all the super heavy samurai players negates and they're like okay you're out of card you only got one card left nah pimp i've got kurakara that's why kurakara has gone up a lot in price too because even if the super heavy samurai player sets up four or five negates then okay cool i'm just gonna bait out the negates as best i can and then tribute them all off for kurakara kurakara doesn't activate like nibiru it's like a lava golem or a sphere mode it's just a summoning condition so it doesn't trigger anything that's like leaves the field by a card effect type of thing kind of like tier element root Kalos. if you tribute it off with like a lava golem it can't special summon itself back so guys let me know down in the comments about what you think about this Yu-Gi-Oh in depth i tried to cover all of the bases and all of the choke points um as well uh, i was going to do some test hands but i figured there's so many combo videos already on youtube i don't want to bore you with something that is already out there in the wild something like purely is different because you know not every hand is just going to be get to wakushi and then do your full combo for purely it's more like hey how am i as a player in my mind going to take this five card hand and make the most of it so guys let me know what you think down in the comments below let me know if you want to keep on seeing these Yu Gi Oh in-depth videos let me know how i can make these better so that you can become better as a player that's what the end goal of all this is so thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next video